In this video, we are going to come up with a shorter way to find derivatives. So far, the way we've been doing it is either numerically or using the definition of the derivative. And numerically isn't um, a great way because we don't get quite enough information. We have to do a different calculation every time we want a new point. And with the definition of the derivative, that's a great method, but it's algebraic, and so some it takes um, quite a long time sometimes. So we're going to look at several different functions and see if we can come up with a pattern. Okay, so suppose our function is f of x equals x squared. So if we're going to use the definition of the derivative, we're going to do f of x plus h. So that's going to be x plus h squared, and we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Step two in finding the derivative is to take that f of x plus h and subtract off f of x and we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared so we get 2xh plus h squared. Step three we take what we had from step two and we divide by h so if we divide both terms here by h, the 2xh just becomes 2x, and the h squared just becomes h. And then finally, we take the limit as h approaches 0 of the 2x plus h, and nothing happens to this 2x term, but the h term goes to 0. So we get 2x. So we have f prime of x is 2x. Okay, so now let's see what happens when we do f of x equals x cubed. So again, f of x plus h. So this we're going to have to do a little bit more work. Um, I already did x plus h squared. That was right here. So I'm going to have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then when I multiply this out, I'm going to get x cubed. And I'm going to let you... Um, foil this out, but you're going to get x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. And if you just distribute the x across all three terms and then distribute the h across all three terms, you're going to get this. Okay, step two. Whoops, f of x plus h minus f of x this term right here, that x cubed term, is going to cancel. So we're just going to have 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. Step three, we've got to divide by h. So if I take this term and divide it by h, I'm just going to have 3x squared. If I take this term and divide by h, I get 3xh. And if I take h cubed and divide by h, I get h squared. Last step, the derivative equals the limit as h approaches 0 of 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared. This term and this term are both going to go to 0. So we just end up with 3x squared. Okay, so if our function is two or is x squared, the derivative looks like two x. If our function is x cubed, our derivative looks like three x squared. One thing to notice is when we go from the function to its derivative, the exponent on our x is one less in both situations. The other thing to notice is that the coefficient changes. And um, here the coefficient becomes 2, here the coefficient becomes 3. And if you notice, that that coefficient is what the exponent was. So I had 2x squared, now I have 2x. I had x cubed, now I have 3x squared. So let's use this to predict what we think the derivative might be if f of x is x to the fourth. Okay, well, if I use that same pattern, I know I'm going to have x to the third this time because every time the, the, um, the exponent on our x was one less, 
And I also know that that coefficient changes, and what we said was the coefficient becomes what the exponent was. So 4x cubed. Okay, so this gives us what's called the power rule. So if we have f of x equals x to the n, then the derivative is, so you bring this exponent, so you have x to the n, you bring this exponent down in front, and that's how we get that n, and then you have x to the n minus 1. Okay, so let's look at some other types of functions. So we have the power rule, but we have lots of other types of functions that aren't powers. What if our function is f of x equals some number? So like I'm talking about something like f of x equals 2, or f of x equals negative 3, something like that. If we think about what a derivative is, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. And um, if I looked at this function, this would look like a horizontal line through C. So horizontal lines always have a slope of zero. That's just constant across that whole line. So if our function is f of x equals c and we're trying to find its derivative, and the derivative always equals the slope of the tangent line or the slope of the curve, then we know that it has to be zero. So this gives us another rule. It's called the constant rule. And it says that if we have a function that's f of x just equals some number, then its derivative is zero. Okay, so now let's look at what happens if we have a coefficient in front of the power. So, um, and in fact, we're actually going to look at whenever we have a coefficient in general. But the um, example of what I'm thinking of is maybe something like f of x equals 6x squared. What do we do with that 6? I know how to find the derivative of the x squared part, but what do I do with that 6? Okay, so let's think of a function that is some constant times f of x. If I want to find the derivative of that function, and I don't know it, then what I have to do is use the definition of the derivative to find um, the value of that derivative. So I'm going to have the limit as h approaches 0 of c times f of x plus h minus c times f of x all over h. So this is just that definition of the derivative if my function is c f of x. Okay, so if I look at this, I'm noticing that both terms have that c in it. So I'm going to factor it out. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of c times f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, now, if I look at this, I'm trying to calculate this limit as h approaches 0, and this c here really doesn't have anything to do with h. It doesn't impact the derivative at all, or the limit at all. It's just some number that's out here. So I could just move it out, because it doesn't impact my derivative or my limit at all. It impacts the derivative, but it doesn't impact my limit. So I have f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, and this part, this whole limit part, that is what we have defined f prime of x to be. So I have c times f prime of x. So if we have a coefficient, that's being multiplied by a function, then that coefficient um, just kind of gets ignored or carried along, and um, we take the derivative of the function that has the variable in it. So if we look at this example that we started with, f of x equals 6x squared, this means that I'm going to just kind of carry that 6 along for the ride, 
and I'm going to take the derivative of the x squared part. And if I use the power rule on that, I just have 2x. So my derivative is 12x. Okay, so what if we have more than one term? So for example, our function looks like x cubed plus 3x squared. Okay, so what would be nice is if I could just take the derivative of this plus the derivative of this. And in fact, that's what we can do. We can just go term by term and take each derivative independently. And I'm not going to show you a proof of that, but you can find them in most calculus textbooks. The, ru um, the rule written out um, in mathematics looks like the derivative of any two functions added or subtractive is equal to the derivative of the first plus or minus the derivative of the second function. So you just go term by term and take the derivatives. So let's look at a couple just real simple examples here. So if our function is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5 and I wanted to find the derivative my derivative is going to look like, okay, so I have x cubed, so that's going to be 3x to the 3 minus 1. So I brought that, co that exponent down in to the coefficient um, position, and then I have x to the 1 less minus, okay, this 3 here goes along for the ride. Take the derivative of the x squared, I'm going to have 2x to the 2 minus 1. And the derivative of a constant is just 0. So we get 3x squared minus 6x. OK, so next, this next function has the um, same idea, but it's, um, it's not just a straight polynomial. And the nice thing about the power rule is as long as we can write um, these terms as powers of x, then we can use the power rule. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite my function. So I'm going to have f of x equals, um, I'm going to put 3x to the minus 4. So I can bring this x to the fourth up to the numerator if I make that exponent negative. And then I have x to the, if I have a square root, that looks like x to the 1 half. So I have my index in my um, denominator of my exponent. And then here, um, I like to take and separate the coefficient part from my power part. So I'm going to write 4 fifths x squared. Okay, so I have rewritten. Now notice that I did not do any derivatives in that step. All I did was rewrite each term so I could use the power rule. Now I'm ready to do the power rule. I give the derivative the right name. It's f prime of x. And now I'm going to go term by term. So I have 3 times negative 4x to the negative 4 minus 1 minus 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1 plus 4 fifths times 2x to the 2 minus 1. So this gives us negative 12x to the negative 5 minus 1 half x to the minus 1 half plus 8 fifths x to the 1. And I don't need to put that one there. So look for more examples in a later video.